Hello, Emma. Can you listen to me? Hello. Uh, yes, I can. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And how about you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, I'm sorry for last Friday. I couldn't, um, I had problems trying to connect. At the end, I couldn't, you know, remain connected due to um, signal or, or reception, you know, problems. Did you connect on Friday, Emma? Yes, I did. You... And no problem, it's okay. Right. Yeah, I know. So I try, you know, I try to connect, but then I couldn't. And I, I couldn't even say anything because, um, you know, I didn't have reception. So I apologize for that. Well, welcome. We are going to start our session number. Uh, this is session number two. Expecting for um, any instructions from INSAFOR and RIGAR. So RIGAR, so we can, um, you know, maybe reschedule that class. I think they will let us know how to proceed with this. Well, welcome. And this is session number two, like I said. Let me start sharing the screen. Welcome, Alexander. Welcome, Jeffrey. I really hope you have had a great uh, weekend and that you are ready to start a new week, okay? So how's it going, Jeffer? Hey, everything fine, teacher. And what about you? I'm doing good. Happy to be here. <laughs> you know, I couldn't remain on Friday. You know, I, you know, I had problems with the connection. So I apologize for that. Let's see, and I can see we have here connected as well. And this is Alexander. How are you doing, Alexander? Mm, I'm very good. Nice to hear that. Okay, so I can yeah. see more people are joining in. Uh, Joel is just arriving. Okay, welcome, Joel. Okay, so let me start with the with the class. We had some. We had an activity which was pending. And before I start maybe checking on this, I would like to know if you remember what are those uh, personal uh, relative pronouns that we know. Anybody open your mic and start speaking English with me and with that class. So what are those um, relative pronouns that we practice or that we have practiced previously? maybe here in this course or maybe in any other, um, I don't know, learning experience. Who and that. Okay, thank you so much, Emma. We have studied who and that, all right. And based on that, we have here guys on the screen, as you can see, we have this pending exercise since last week, right? And we have here some other relative pronouns. For example, we have which this is another one. We have when, we have whose, we have um, what, who, whom, which is a little bit more formal, even where and when. All of these are called relative pronouns, right? And we are studying relative clauses. That's the topic for this time. And most of the ones we have here are considered relative um, clauses when we use uh, an object, okay? That's the point. Now, I want you to tell me what are the answers in this? Who did this? All right, let's see. Number one, let's place uh, the number here, okay? The number that goes with the complement or with the second part of the sentence. So. Can you share with me? I didn't recognize the man. And then what's the compliment for this? What do you have? Do you do this, guys? Do you complete this exercise? Let's see, I have a message on the chat. Okay, Reina is here who robbed me. Okay, so Reina is saying, we need to have it right here. Okay. What about the next one? Read it, please, and then tell me. Jeffer, can you try? 
the movie um, whose soundtrack I liked wasn't good. Hmm, interesting, okay. Let me keep writing. So we have one and then the movie whose soundtrack, soundtrack, okay. Okay, Joel, what do you have for the next one, number three? Well, can you listen to me? Maybe you have issues with your mic because I didn't hear. Something is wrong with your um, connectivity, Joel, because I don't see you have a mic on that on your profile. I don't see any mic active. Maybe if you're using headphones, you can disconnect them and plug them in again that might oh now you have it unmute it please still something is wrong no problem maybe you can send your oh yeah now i can listen to you so yeah go ahead my are broken i don't know <laughs> yeah the number the number three um she doesn't recall the place where she lost her keys She doesn't recall where she lost. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, Emma, how about number four? He used to have a dog when he was... When he was a child, is that the one you said, this one? Okay. All right, let's continue. Alexander, can you try one of them, please? Oh, which one? Next one, number number four. Not number four. No, no, number five, I'm sorry, number five. Okay, I'm not sure, but to be honest, I didn't. That, I forgot, I'm sorry. Um, I remember the time. Um, when we were all together. Let me write it down. Okay, I will respect your answer. Mm -hmm. Next one, I can see we are more people connected. So let's see, Gustavo. Next one, please. Number five or number six? For number six. Oh, here, you write number five and number, sorry, you write number six and number five. <laughs> and I can't erase it. Let me do this. Oh, you don't see this. Okay, number five. <laughs> you see, that's the best number five you have ever seen. Yes, what about number six, Gustavo? My bad. Yeah. This is the house in which I grew up. The house in which I grew up, okay. Let's see, Roxana, seven. Um, he can understand what you say. He can understand what you say, this is number. And the last but not the least, uh, so she didn't tell me to. Okay, and then the, this is obvious, this is the one that is missing. Let me ask you, do you have it like this or do you by any chance have a different answer? Guys, like that? In your uh, notebook, I know you did it already. Is it like this? Or would you like to change any from this? Mm -hmm. We are okay with this? Okay, that silence tells me that you agree with that. Let's see. Take a look at the way it is, and then now take a look at this one. Is it the same? Let me erase it because 
I think it's not clear the way it is like this, maybe that helps a little bit. Look. Can I do like this one, but I lose my, <laughs> my notebook. Okay, <laughs> you lost your notebook, so you don't have it. Okay, as you can see here, well, actually uh, the answer is quite similar, right? As, as you can see, this is exactly the way we have it. And then uh, this type of sentences, guy, are really, let's say, uh, common in English because we are uh, just linking two clauses into one sentence. And in order for us to link two sentences, we need to use one relative pronoun. And the relative pronouns that we have studied are the ones we, uh, that we just mentioned, which are which, who, where, whom, and, and so on and so forth. Now, that's today's topic, but we need to, this is from the video. Have you seen this one? Did you see this on the, on the video? We have two type of relative pronouns and I want you to create one, one sentence, but on your own, with your ideas. We have two sentences, right? As you can see here. And then we have one sentence out of these two ones. Can you try to create one on your own ideas? Who wants to volunteer? We have, uh, I like I like guys, they aren't too serious. And then we have, I like uh, guys who aren't too serious. In this case, we are using the relative pronoun who as subject. That means that we don't need to use another subject because that who is the subject or that, okay? And then we have uh, the relative pronoun as an object. In this case, we need to use the another subject because it's being used as the object of the sentence, okay? That's the difference. So I would love to read or hear one example of each category to see if it makes sense, okay? And if you have questions, we can go over that as well. I will give you two minutes to think about one example of each. Maybe you can change the idea, not only focus on uh, guys, you can think about other things, not necessarily um, guys, it can be situations, things, um, objects, uh, I don't know, you, you name it, but then uh, try to link two of, the, two of these sentences into one. That's the point. Try to create one to see, you know, how, you, how it goes, we have Let's start with this one. 
Okay, let's start with this one. We have um, relative pronouns as subjects, okay? So you can open your mic and provide me with one example or you can send it on the chat. And then we are gonna think about as objects. As object is when you have um, the relative pronoun, you need to have one subject and is working as the object. Like in this case, we have him, which is the object and him, which is the object, right? When we say it in the second sentence, when we use it as part of, as part of uh, the uh, object, we delete the object in the second sentence, as you can see it. I'd rather someone who I can talk to, I, I can talk easily. You don't say him, you delete him because you're talking, you're using him, you're using who, which is part of the, uh, is the object of the sentence. You don't need to say him again. So that's the point in the second sentence. But in the first one, you don't have any object. So you can use who as a subject. We don't need any object. There's nothing there um, to make reference to an object. So um, maybe you, we can think, or you can think of, of any example, share it if it's okay. Uh, if it's not okay, we can think how we can make it, you know, uh, the, how we can make the correction and so on. So take maybe one, one more minute and please send the sentence you have. If you don't feel like writing, just open your mic and say a sentence. Try to stick to this structure, that was the point. Teacher, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. I'm really struggling with the first one because I'm not sure about the difference, but I did it. So um, I would love I to see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it could it be I like guys who aren't too serious. That's that's the one that we have here, right? I like guys who aren't too serious. That's the answer. That's the one we have here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what about an example on your own? We can think about other things. Let me give you another example. Let's say um, if we want to stick to this, uh, let's see a structure. Uh, let's say I like movies. This is one sentence. And then um, what? Let's see. What team? Exciting. So if I have this, for example, I like movies, they have exciting scenes. How can I link it? How can I have one sentence? So I can say, I like movies. Now I need to have my relative pronoun that, what, that have exciting scenes. You see, okay. in this case, I'm just making one sentence out of these two ones. This is my relative um, pronoun. This is my relative uh, sentence. This is the one that I'm using. When, when I'm using relative pronoun as subject, okay? I like movies that have exciting scenes. So basically this is the one that I have created using uh, the relative pronoun that, okay? And that's the point of having one sentence from two in which you delete the subject. You don't say it again. And then the second one is when you have one uh, object. So if you don't, I don't know if you remember the object, I can, I can refresh this. 
So for example, objects are me, you, him, her, his, sorry, there, I'm there. And then what is us? One, two, three, four, five, it. These are the objects, right? They are called a uh, direct object, okay? Or object pronoun, let's say object pronoun, object pronouns, okay? So these are the object. So whenever you have any of these ones in a sentence, in the second sentence, you can use any relative pronoun to delete the object. I can give you another example. Let's see. Um, if we see the, the one we have I, I'm going to use the same structure. We have I prefer prefer um, see. Joel, yes. You want to ask anything? I have uh -huh. three sentences here. We have uh-huh. I made, I made another one, another okay. sentence. Thank you. Go ahead, share it with me, please. Then I'll finish my example. Sorry? Share it with me. Yeah, go ahead and share okay. it. I enjoy eating food that is salty. Mm -hmm. Could it be? I enjoy eating food, eating food that, it, that is salty. That is salty. That would be the first one, right? That would be the first, uh, the first category. I enjoy um, eating food that is salty. Maybe because it's the bird to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, that makes sense. And then um, that's the way. I mean, that's the that's the structure we are looking for. I'm enjoy eating. So, what are the two sentences here? I enjoy eating food. The food. Is salt. The two sentences. The two sentences could it be I enjoy eating food. It is salty. And you link the two sentences with that. Mm -hmm. And then you say I enjoy eating food. That is salty. You don't say it. Then it makes sense. That's the point. Yeah. To avoid repeating the subject. Yes, that's the first category. Let's see, Emma, I like to spend my time with some of my classmates who are kind. I like this one. Yes, you don't say, you don't say your classmates again. I like sports, it's a good healthy habit. I like sports that make me stay healthy. Okay, you change in the second structure, but the same, the same way, right? Same uh, intention. I like your company, you're so funny. I like your company. I like your company. That is so funny. That is so funny. I like your company. That, well, in this case, because it says, I like your company, you're so funny. So the who is funny, the company or, or, or the person who you are talking to? Because maybe in this way, if you want to link the, the first two ones, then we need to change something because I, I feel that in the second one, I like your company, that is so funny. It's making a reference to the, to the action of liking the company, okay? If you see, I like pets, they are too funny. I like pets that are, exactly, exactly, that's pretty good. I prefer those I can exercise with them. I prefer those that I can, exactly. Jeffrey, yeah, these two ones are really good. I like the ones uh, Jefferson because you can clearly see the, the uh, difference between one another. In the first one, subject, because you delete they. In the second one, object, because you deleted them, right? That's exciting. As you can see, the examples Jefferson are, they really like make evidence on these two structures. We have subject, we have object. Mm -hmm. Really good. So I would love to read more examples like this, like that has the two categories. We are just taking a look at in here. Try to create one with object, like an object. Set. I love the food that I can eat with 
I love the food that I can eat with a lot of cheese. You don't say I like the food that I can eat. You don't mention food again with a lot of cheese, yes. Yes, makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. Okay, any other example with these objects? Object um, when the relative pronoun is the object of the sentence? Anybody else? Think about one, you are, you are omitting any object. Like the example Emma sends, the object is the food, which is it, it, right? With the letter, we don't repeat again food, right? That's the point. Deleting the second, uh, on the second sentence, the object. Let's think about one. Let's say one or two more minutes with this. We are nine people connected. So what about the other ones? Roxana, Alexander, Evelyn, Jessica. Can you try to create one example with this structure? and then send it, send it to a chat. Let me finish creating my example. So I'll give you some time. Let me think about a different one. Let me see this one. Let's see. I have one more here, Roxana says, I, I like people that are very responsible. Yes, that's, that's the first category, right? In which you are deleting the subject. Mm -hmm. Responsible, res, res, responsible, that's the way you, you say it. Responsible. Mm -hmm. yes. I send uh, the spelling. So what about as an object? I think this is the challenge as an object. No. Mm -hmm. Anybody? I hate people who mistreat animals. That would be Alexander in the, in the first category, right? First category, which is, uh, which is the one you are using with, uh, you are deleting the subject, right? I hate the people. And then you say who, you don't add the subject, right? Then you just need to add uh, the verb after who. That's a really good one. Now, what about one in which you add, you add um, the, the object, right? You delete the object in the second one. That's, that's the point. I have one from Gustavo. I prefer someone I can go out with. I, I prefer someone I can go out with her. To anywhere, I prefer someone who I can go out to anywhere with. Okay, I prefer someone who I can go out with, and then say anywhere at the end. But that that makes that's a really good one. You are deleting her, which is the object, and you are using the relative pronoun as part of that. I like it. So that's the point. The point is to delete the object from the sentence, right? 
That's a really good one, Gustavo. And what about the, the other ones that are connected here? Can you think of any example that you can, uh, you know, come up with and you can share it as an object? Maybe the, the key here is to think about the object first, right? And then you basically you deleted it. And if the, if the sentence has an object, it will be easy to say it. But if the sentence doesn't have an object, then you won't find a way how to say it. That's why, you know, maybe we need to start thinking, what do we want to say? And I think the easiest way is to add any of these objects. It can be maybe her, him, us, and, and, and so on. Jeffer, can you think about any other one? Alexander, and because you are guiding, I will send it in chat. Mm -hmm. I think in uh, that one, if yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah, yeah, I haven't fin didn't finish that. Yeah, that that makes sense, right? But then uh, the this one is basically this the one that I just sent belongs to the first category, right? Because we don't use the subject. Because yeah, if you think about it, the sentence I just made up just uh, wrote on the on the screen, it doesn't have an object. That's why we feel like as if uh, we cannot uh, use, I mean, I mean, we need to use, we need to delete the subject. So, so it makes sense. I like how you, how you um, wrote it down in here on the chat. But then let's think about one more, which has the object in the first ones. And then in the second one, we basically deleted it. That's the challenge that we're looking for. We don't say the object because we, we use the relative uh, pronoun as the object of the sentence. That's the key. Let me see. Let's see, the ones who already sent the, the, um, the examples are only Jeffer, who else sent? Let's see, uh, Gustavo, I think. And then I have Alexander send one, but with, um, with, with the first category. And then we have Roxana, first category. Emma, Emma, yeah, it's okay with this one. Reina. Reina, I haven't read anything from you. And then the other ones, I like my new job. It is so interesting. I, I like shoes. I can climb mountains within. I like, I like this one, Joel. Exactly. I like it. I like sh shoes. I can climb mountains with them. And then the, the one we're looking for is, I like shoes that I can climb mountains with. Exactly, you deleted them. Awesome, I like this one. And then uh, Jessica, I like my new job, it is so interesting. So how can we make this into one sentence? Maybe this one, we will, it will belong to the first category, but I want to read it, I want to read it. And then Reina, what's your example?
I prefer someone I can I can talk of every I can talk of everything. Mm -hmm. And then what is what is the other one? The point is to use one uh, like relative pronoun to link two sentences. Let's take a look at these two examples we have sent. They have provided us with. Reina is. Reina has some problems with her internet connection, so he is trying to fix that right now. Trying to connect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, I see. And then uh, who else? Let's see, we have Jeffrey, Gustavo, Emma already sent one, Alexander and Jessica sent one. And this one we have here is, let's see, belongs to, uh, I prefer someone that I can, I prefer someone, that I can talk of everything. Yeah, I, I see your point, Evelyn. What I don't see is the relative, what I don't see is the object of the sentence in the first two ones. That's why I prefer someone that I can, someone that I can talk about everything. Mm -hmm. That would be, Let's see, Evelyn. And then I like hats. I can use I can use them on the beach. I like hats that I can use on the beach. Right? You deleted them. Okay. Good. I think uh, that's basically the idea, right? That's the idea of deleting any object from the sentence. I think the challenge here is to think about which is which are the first two ones so we can delete. It. Sometimes we might speak, you know, you know, and then we're not thinking, well, this one doesn't have an object because we feel as if it is right already when we are talking. We don't necessarily think what is the object of the sentence, but I bet if you use the object again, it will sound really unnatural. For example, I prefer someone that I can talk to him uh, too easily or that I can uh, talk to her easily, that, that would sound as if you are re repeating something because you are using already the relative pronoun as the object. So it's not a, you don't have to mention it again because it would be unnecessary. And that's basically the point. Now, um, I think I might bring some other examples tomorrow. We can like refresh this. We are going to uh, study some other uh, vocabulary. Let me see this one. I prefer someone I can go out, uh, I can go out to her every day. I prefer someone who I can go out every day. I like the second one, uh, Reina, that's really good. I prefer someone who I can go out uh, every day. So I prefer someone I can go out with her every day. That's the second one, right? And then maybe the two, you need to delete it. So you say, I prefer someone. I can go out with her every day, like that. And then you say in the second one, you say, I prefer someone who I can go out um, every day. That's basically the way it should be. Just delete two and then uh, like that, it'll be okay. Let's take a look at this question, guys, because um, let's see, we have some time. Look at this one, uh, relative as object. This is another example that I, that I got you here. JK Rowling is the author. She wrote the Harry Potter uh, books, okay? And then we have um, JK Rowling is the author who wrote the Harry Potter books. And this one, guys, as you can see, we have, um, we deleted the subject she. That's why it's considered in the, the first category, relatives as subject, right? But then when we have relatives as object, this is what we're talking, we don't say the relative, we don't, we don't say the object. In this case is her. Look at the example. She is the author that I have interviewed. You don't mention her because it will be unnecessary. Okay, maybe you want to write these ideas down. Okay, these are connected to the previous example. These are not on the on the on the period. These ones I, I got them for you. 
Maybe you want to write them down just to clarify a little bit more. Okay, once again, we use objects in the first one and in the second one, when we link it with the relative pronoun, we delete it. In the first one, uh, we delete the subject. That's basically the way it works. Let's keep going. Let's see, let me erase this one. Okay, we have some other examples here. See, subject, I would like to listen to maybe Jessica. Jessica, can you read this example as subject, first one? Only read it for, for us, please, this one. This one? Okay. The student who that light next door make too much noise. There are not Numerous virus that wish cause a common cold. Thank you so much. Okay, and this ones we're using the relative pronouns as the subject. We don't have any subject before the verb. So we can either say who or we can say that. So it's not that we're gonna mention all of them. I mean, we, we have to say only one, either or, but not the two of them at the same time. So we say the students who live next door make too much noise, which means we uh, don't say again the students. So we don't say the student who they live. That would be incorrect. So in the second one, there are numerous viruses that cause the common cold, or we can say there are numerous viruses which cause the common cold. So we can use that or which. In either it's okay, but we cannot mention the two of them. So that's the point. Now let's look at the next category, which are as object. And I want to ask Joel. Joel, can you read as object the second part? Yes. Last year, someone that I know had a book, a book published. Or last year, someone who I know had a book published. Exactly. So the key here is that we are using the relative pronoun. This is that or who. And right after that, we need the subject, okay? And that makes a big difference because uh, we're not using the relative pronoun as the, as the subject of the sentence because we, we have it right next to it. But then what's the object that, we, that, that is being omitted? Well, in this case, last year, someone that I know had a book published, can, you, can we think about what can it be the, the object in the first sentence? Or how can we divide this sentence into two? So anybody, how can we make, this, this is already the final product, right? How can we make this sentence into the two uh, single sentences? because we are omitting the, the, the object in this one's already. Who can help me out? Last year. Teacher, is it last year? Some I know someone, uh -huh. and then the second one, and the second one, 
Uh, I know someone. Uh, I know someone that had a book published. Okay, that can be one. Let's take a look at the one Reina sent. Last year, my friend published a book. Okay, and then uh, that will be the second one, right? Okay, any other idea? Gustavo, Evelyn, Alexander. Let's think about what is the object that is being omitted. That's, that's the point. Could it be mm -hmm. he or she? For example, Marco had published a book and you omitted him. Okay. okay, all right. Very good. Emma, what do you think? What's your idea? And what about the second one? The beach that I, that or which we visited last week has been closed for the summer. And then what's the object here of the sentence? Uh, Anybody? So about what? About the second one? About the beach? Of the beach. Okay. The beach uh, that I... Uh -huh. Let me... So we need to... To separate into sentences, right? Like the original form. The original two single sentences, right. So how can we make two single sentences from this uh, sentence, which is already you know, combined with the relative pronoun, that or which, that's, that's the point. Which was the object that was omitted so we can create this final sentence? Uh -huh. So I, I remember that we have seen some example like that, but it's like the beach just the beach. Uh, we visited the beach last week, but has been closer for summer. Something like that. Exactly. Very good. Yeah, we visit the beach. The beach, as Reina said, the beach is the object. We don't say it in the second sentence. We omitted it, right? Which we visited last week. You don't say which we visited the beach last week. It won't make sense. The point here is to delete or to omit the object of the sentence. In this case, I can see Reina already said it on the chat. She's saying it's the beach, that's the object. We don't mention it in the second sentence because we are using a relative pronoun which uh, is basically working as the, as the object of the sentence. Exactly, that's the point. The point is guys to delete or to omit the object of the sentence. That's basically it. And then uh, why? Because we're using a relative pronoun. We don't, we don't want to be redundant. We don't want to say it one more time. That's the point, okay? And then let's see. Let me see if I can, let's see. I can share one other one. Let's see. I think, well, I think this is the only one that I have. And then this belongs to the first session, right? And then I got I got some other uh, topic, but this is for for a new for a new uh, let's say content. And maybe tomorrow I can catch you some other example so we can talk about this. And because I really want to introduce the first uh, this topic, which is which belongs to the next videos that we had on the platform. Okay, and because we only have like ten more minutes to go. And let's see. Please let, do me a favor, try to think about two words that describe your personality and send it on the chat. I will give you, I will give you like one or two minutes, okay? Uh, think about these two words that best describe you as a person and send it on the chat. They can be adjectives or even values or whatever you want to say.
or you can simply open your mic and, and say to me, well, these are the ones that I consider best describe me as a person. And then you wanna say or expand more on your ideas. Uh, the first example emma yeah i think i agree with you with this emma is always connected when uh at, i mean sometimes before before um eight it says gustavo responsible and quiet hmm, okay so are you quiet gustavo you don't like going out and just you know very no. calm okay i always Stay here for class. I see. Uh, uh, let's see, Roxana, friendly and responsible, friendly and curious. Hmm, okay, interesting. And what about the ones that are happy and persevering? Hmm. This was missing. Let's see. I have, okay, Alexander, sociable and honest. Resilience and passion. You see, Jeffrey, I like that one. That, I, I love this value, resilience, you know capacity of you know facing you know, situations okay okay very good let's take a look at this one we have some adjectives i don't know if you have seen them already on the platform but i would love you know to go over them so let's go one by one emma can you read the first one can you read it in here and then you provide me with the definition based on the on the screen Okay, I will read it. Uh, it's going. An easy going person is someone who doesn't worry much or get angry easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Jessica, can you read the second one? Okay. Egoistical. An egoistical person is someone who has a very high opinion of him, herself. Okay, egoistical is egotistical. Right, next one, let's see, Evelyn, number three. Inflexive, an inflexive person is someone who doesn't change, change easily and is stubborn. Stubborn, right, doesn't want to obey, doesn't want to, you know, change the way they, they think, right, really good. And then number four, let's see, Jeffer, read number four, please. Uh, modest. A modest person is someone who doesn't brag about his or her accomplishments. Right. So basically, this person is not saying I'm the best one, right? For what his or her accomplishment they have or he or she has gotten. Really good. Next one, let's see. Joel, please read uh, number uh, five. Number five, so sociable. A sociable person is someone who enjoys being with other people. Pretty good. Next one, Gustavo, stingy. Stingy. A stingy person is someone who doesn't like sharing. Okay. Doesn't like sharing. Really good. Supportive. Let's see, Reina. A supportive person is someone who is helpful and encouraged. Uh -huh. Encouraging, really good. Next one, let's see who hasn't read. Um, once again, please, let's see. Jeffrey, next one, please. Temperamental. Temperamental. A temperamental person is someone who has um, predictable or irregular moods. All right, very good. And Joel, the last one, unreliable. Okay, unreliable. An unreliable person is someone who doesn't do what he or she promised. Okay, imagine. Well, let's do this exercise. We only have five more minutes. Choose one that best 
Let's, let's describe you and the one that least describe you, okay? And then you tell me. So that the first one is gonna be from this one that we have here that you will say, well, this word best describe me and this one, nothing to do with me. So choose one and one and one, and then tell me, please. Maybe you can open your mic and only speak because we only have like a couple of minutes. So who wants to participate? Maybe select from this um, as quick as possible. For example, mm -hmm. teacher, I consider myself as an easygoing person. Okay, that's a word that I love as well. And what about any of these that you would, that you would say, this one, nothing to do with me, that you, that you can tell? Um, Which one I do you mean, say? A lot of them are, are don't define, define, define me. But for example, um, inflexible maybe because I'm always, I have always an open mind to try different things. So I am not inflexible. Okay, you're not inflexible. Okay, you're very flexible. You try to adapt and, and be open to others' ideas. Okay, I like it. Very good. One more, please. Anybody else? Maybe a girl? Me, teacher. Tell us. Uh, sociable. Uh, because I would like to talk with the other person. And I consider me a, a friendly person. Okay. And the one that least describes you? Sorry, teacher. And the one that least like that, that it doesn't have anything to do with you that you consider from this list. That no have. That that yeah, exactly. That you don't have. Um ego egotistical. Egotistical, uh huh. Why do you say that? <laughs> because I um I never uh, think in, no, so, uh, because I always try to the help to the other person. Okay, you are uh, someone who loves helping people. You're not saying I'm the only one, I'm the best one in here, okay. All right, I like it. So uh, basically, I know that maybe you guys want to expand more on your ideas. We only have one more minute. Maybe there is one other volunteer who would like to share one that best describe you and the other one that doesn't have to do with you. Anybody, one more? Don't keep your ideas, guys. Just go ahead and say it. Uh, me, teacher. Uh, go, okay, go ahead. Uh, I think I am supportive and I am not uh, egotistical. Okay. So you, why are you supportive, uh, Jeffrey? Why do you say that? Uh, because with my friend, I every time I am listening to them and helping, help, help them. Okay. You are always helping. Okay, really good. So uh, tomorrow, guys, I'm going to give you maybe one minute or less, maybe 30 uh, seconds for you to tell me about you using these words and try to justify your answer. For example, you say, hey, I'm not as stingy because I'm always trying to share with my friends when I never have some money. I always go ahead and, and buy stuff for them so we can have a good time. And then you can say, I'm very social because whenever there is, there is a social gathering, I like making new friends and blah, blah, blah. So please try to prepare maybe from 30 seconds to one minute talk about you using this vocabulary. And we do it tomorrow on the first, you know, at the, at the beginning of the class, okay? Because it's already nine. I'll see you guys tomorrow on this uh, topic. And we might recall previous topic, which is about uh, relatives and, and, so, and you know, some other example with this object and subject, okay? So have a nice night, guys, and see you tomorrow, okay? Take care. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.